Welcome to another edition of the Sales and Marketing Power Hour with your host, Carol Morgan with Denim Marketing and Kimberly Mackey with New Home Solutions Consulting. Welcome to the Madhouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody. I hope you are highly caffeinated because you are so going to need it today. Uh, I know. I think I need more. Well, you know what, Carol? We've got this giant panel. We have so much to get through. So we are trying to wrap up the year in a big red bow again. And we have partnered with Lasso again to do this. Last year went so well. We're making this an annual thing now. Heck so yeah. It is definitely mm-hmm. going to be a thing. It's so. just the hardest part about it is figuring out who to ask because Lasso has so many amazing experts. I know. So it's, it's hard to decide. And you can only, you know, an hour is only so much time. We'd like to invite everybody, but... <laughs> So, and we will send out the link to Lasso's annual roundup that they do. So all of that will come to you, all of our panelists, you'll have all of their contact information. Uh, so we will definitely get all of that out there. Uh, but first, Carol and I would like to invite you to come hang out with the cool kids. So please join us at the Sales Marketing Power Hour Facebook group. So, the, and you can search for us just like this. So everybody, we should have like a massive stampede right now. <laughs> everybody take your phone out and just go in there and join that group. So you can, you can actually comment live as we go today. Uh, we would love to have you in there and don't wait on us to post something you post. Oh, this please is, post. Yes. It's a, this is a group. It's supposed to be discussion based and, yeah. and questions, whatever's going comments, on. Your world, questions, yeah. 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 Send it, send it our way. Cool. Ms. Morgan, you want to give your ah uh, well, quick I, intro? yeah, I'll give a quick intro. Carol Morgan, founder and president of Denim Marketing, a 22-year-old company based here in uh, Metro Atlanta area. We specialize in PR, social, and um, digital marketing, um, and our goal is to prevent random acts of marketing and to market with intent. So, if you Please. need help with any content, we are a content shop random acts of oh oh, please yes (laughs) I think I've had that conversation about three times this week (laughs) (laughs) send them my way lots of randomness going on in marketing these days so and I am Kimberly Mackey and my company is New Home Solutions Consulting Uh, apparently there is a lot of confusion about what I do so I'm gonna try to break it down I always say that I'm the person who people call the builders call when they want to want sales to be the engine that drives the train instead of running it off the tracks so that means I'm an immersion consultant. I get in there, I work with your systems. I, I look at efficiencies and make sure that we're not just selling homes, but we're selling homes profitably in a way that is sustainable for the company to grow. So, um, and I see, I see lots of people saying hi in the chat. So thank you very much. <laughs> Please keep that chat going. Uh, that way we don't all feel alone sitting here in our little holiday bliss that we have going on. If you want to reach me, here is my contact information. And then um, without further ado, Heidi, will you do the honors and jump in here and give us a little bit about our, our sponsor today with La- ACI Lasso? I would love to. Thanks for having me on today. I'm Heidi Schrader and I'm the senior consultant for Lasso and ECI Lasso. We're the number one uh, CRM for home builders. Uh, if you haven't, if you didn't know that already, I'm sure that most of you are Lasso users, or most of you at least know about Lasso. Um, and every year at the the end of the year, we start looking toward the coming year and ask all of our industry partners. Man, we have some really great partnerships uh, throughout the industry with people that really know what they're doing, and we ask them for a little quote of what they think the next year is going toward. So uh, that's what this is. And like Kim really said, she'll send you uh, a link to that at the end of this. But I really appreciate uh, you hosting this and allowing Lasso to be a part of this so we can uh, help everyone get all of that information. We look forward every year to, the, to being asked, being part of it, and also just mm-hmm. reading what everybody else uh, is, is projecting out there. It's always a lot of fun. So our look at this rock star panel. I mean, this is awesome. So, Carol, you wanna you wanna do the honors here? 
just quickly well, run through our panel? Absolutely. And I think that almost everyone here knows all these folks, but we have Erica <laughs> Lockwood here with us today. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember where she hails from. It's out, out what I would consider west, west of Houston. me somewhere. Houston. Houston, yes, Houston. Houston Texas now. And uh, very excited to have her with us today. Um, and I'm sitting here looking for my cheat sheet, Kimberly. Oh, I know who it is. <laughs> so um, Erica's with Joseph Chris Partners. So call them for all of your recruiting needs. We have Leah Fellows with Blue Gypsy. She's the chief gypsy in charge. And they do <laughs> online sales consulting training. So if you need help training your online sales consultant, that is who you'd call. Anya Chrysanthem, well, she is going to be telling us today what her new gig is, which I'm excited about. Ooh, so I'll yeah. save that and let her tell us later. But she has been um, doing lots of marketing and technology and likes to work on the technology side of the business to help people have all of that up to speed. Um, then, of course, we have Roland Narnasi, and Roland's company is New Home Sales Plus. So if you need sales consulting, that is who you call. Of course, um, Heidi has already talked a little bit to y'all. He Heidi Schroeder with ECI Solutions, aka Lasso. So happy to have her today. And then, of course, last but never least, we have outhouse in the house, Kevin Weitzel. So if you need fantastic 3D renderings, um, you know, all that cool digital stuff that makes your website look good, um, I'm, you know, glossing it over, Kevin, you can dive into it more when you introduce yourself later, <laughs> but Kevin can help you with all of that. So really fun group. Glad that you're all six with us today. So, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can Yay. see all of us. Yay. All at one time. Yeah. Hello. So questions <laughs> in the chat, keep those going. Chime in please as we go. And then don't forget prizes at the end. So you got to stay tuned and uh, we will do those as we get toward the top of the hour. So without further ado, um, Erica, we're going to kick off with you. And uh, Erica is my go-to person whenever I, uh, I'm, I'm working with a builder who needs, uh, who needs a search run and needs executives and, and managers. And um, so she, she is going to be talking to us today a little bit about how our words matter <laughs> in ways, Carol, Carol's dragon may matter too. Uh, <laughs> that uh, we may not have thought about before. So I'm going to kick that off to you, Erica. Go for it. All right. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here with such a very um, fun group. I'll say that. Fun. No, it's okay. incredibly fun, crazy, wild. So, uh, you know, this year, you know, when I was asked by Lasso to uh, put my content together and, and share for the tips, which... I'm always honored. Uh, I, I really didn't have to think all that long about what I wanted to say, you know, and it really is about the power of words. Words matter. And there's just been so much going on in the world, um, here in the U.S. And, and everywhere. And that just makes me take a pause and think, what are some of the things that I'm saying or maybe not saying that might really hurt someone, you know, I don't, and you don't even know, right? And so we were talking earlier about just, we grow up with terms, quotes, things that our parents said, and their grandparents probably said them, right? And kids, especially, and sometimes even us as adults, we don't know what those really mean. And they could really hurt someone and, and make it that person or that group of people feel like there's, you know, it's a lack of respect for maybe their particular culture. And so you specifically even be like, oh, you're crazy or, oh, I've got ADD. You know, those are, those are real things, right? Mental health is, is always uh, something that's being talked about more and more since COVID, right? And you don't know if, it's not like someone wears a badge and says, you know, I have ADD or um, PTSD. You know, sometimes we'll, people will just joke and it can really be hurtful to someone that is dealing with that. And you know, it's just examples like that is just to be more thoughtful and 
do some uh, like self-awareness and also look into even online, Google it, and you'll see there's just so many things I didn't know. And, you know, I, I thought, gosh, I say that. And, you know, even we kind of joke about the peanut gallery, right? And the peanut gallery has a meaning to it. It was probably created more like in the 1920s. And it was the, the people who had to sit in the back of the movie theater. So uh, perhaps a person of color might know that origin and, and be offended by it. They, they may not, but you know, it's just things like that. It's, it's eye-opening. So that's why I wanted to share. Yeah. It really is. And people may not even think about at all. They, they don't mean it's not meant in a, in, as ill intent. It's, it's simply not being aware, as you said, just not taking the time uh, to, to do that research or right. think about where did that phrase come from? You know, what yeah. is that? What's the origin of that? Yeah. Just you know, saying something that could be hurtful without really even meaning it still could hurt. And Absolutely. It can be as taking somebody through the home and saying this is a master bedroom instead mm -hmm. of the owner's bedroom. So the there's primary a suite. Yeah. Does anybody I, know where, where that phrase master bedroom came from? Because I, I learned this recently. You know, it's interesting. I've heard it, but I, um, I don't remember. So go for it, Roland, share. It was the Sears catalog in 1927. Really? So yeah, they, they actually came out with it as, as a term and it was very popular. No one ever thought back then about it being you no. know, a helpful phrase. Of course, I, I first stopped using that i think in the 90s we, we changed it to owner's retreat or owner's suite but but it it, it it originated harmlessly from the sears catalog it's just a sort of a way of creating a like an aura about a space that would be interesting and exciting and you know mm -hmm. so there, there, there we go so now we, we don't yeah. use it but yeah I I think it that. great yeah, comment in the chat i'm sorry i'll let you yeah, go the next, origin of words from... is, is fascinating yeah ben says um he's been a copywriter for 20 years across almost every industry at one point or another. Um, the, you know, the one rule that applies for him is if he wouldn't say it to his grandma, it's not appropriate for a marketing communications oh, piece. Nice. Probably not appropriate to say either. And I completely right. agree with that. I call it the cringe factor when I'm reading something that we've written. I get to that word that makes me go, eh, either because I think it's you know, not the right word or I think it's probably not appropriate. I always right. try to rewrite that. So, okay, Kevin, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. I'm always <laughs> amazed how, how, how you can say with all due respect and then say something mean afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, with all due respect, you suck. And I don't want to, what? But you say, I say with all due respect. So come on. Well, it's like a language hall pass, right? You bless can say your heart, right? Bless your heart. That's the other one. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. And now you can just tear uh -huh. I love it. I love these little. Because of the new legislation in California and Washington that just passed, we had to send out an email to all of our interactive floor plan uh, clients to, in those states to let them know that if they have the term master bedroom, master bath, that they're not even allowed to have that on their digital or printed material anymore. And we right. will get that changed for them for free. We just have to have them notify us wow. that that's what they have. So. Wow. That's interesting. That's I didn't know that it had gone that far. Yeah. yeah. We try to remove it from everything. I got um, some ADA descriptions that somebody asked me to review the other day and it said, master, master, master. And I emailed them back and I'm like, all right, first of all, you got to lose the word master. And second of all, you know, especially when you're talking ADA, you can't say see or envision or, you know, because oh, wow. no, they can't yeah. see or envision. Oh, so it's kind God. of interesting. Um, Kelly asked in the chat, which state? So is it California and Washington? California and Washington, yes. Okay, California and Washington. It is. It but is. A, the but law a good now. practice across the board, regardless. Oh yeah. Of the, I mean, if it's it doesn't happening have to be a in California. It's going to be happening everywhere else. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Yes. Terry Smith says um, we see owner suite. See <laughs> others using primary. What's the consensus? I don't know that there is one. I see both. Anyone both. think there's a major sway one way or the other on those two? No, words? I see owner suite probably more often. That's what I see. Yeah. 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 Or retreat, or, yeah, or retreat, or retreat. Like retreat. retreat. Owners retreat. Yes. Mm -hmm. On boats, we always called it an owner's cabin. So that's we were, that, see, I, you were ahead of your time. Yes. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to dive into Great. a question for Kimberly. So, golly, I know your lasso um, little piece was about oh, um, having the right it. person in the appropriate position. Of course, right now, sometimes I think it's having a qualified person in that position or hello, anyone or a body, position. right? You know, let's, find, let's find some warm bodies, which of course is something that Erica can help us with, but um, talk a little bit about that, you know, hiring practices and finding the right person for the right job. I would be happy to. And, 
it's ironic that I was the one who, who wrote this. I kind of would have expected this to come from Erica, but you know, we have to start thinking differently as an industry and stop the madness of thinking that we only hire people from our industry with experience from our industry because we're growing at a pace in the past couple of years, especially where we can't just do that. And I've always said it was a bad practice because if you take people who have not succeeded elsewhere and somehow think that you're going to plant them in your company and that's gonna be the magic bullet, does that really make a lot of sense? So I think we have to broaden our scope. I think we need to broaden our definition of what we are looking for. And I, as, a, as an industry, I think we also have to really think about, do, does our company represent the population that we serve? Because people want to relate to us and we know that home buying is a relationship business. So if we are as a company and as, as sales and even OSCs, if we're not seeing people who look like us and talk like us and, and, and you know, it, it may be more difficult to, and if they, yeah, I certainly don't want that guy. Uh, so what if he looks like this? Well, you know, you're but, kind of back to that DEI conversation that we had mm-hmm. last month. I, and I, I am touched a on. Bit. Yeah. I mean, it's so important. Yeah. So, so look, how can you be more diverse? How can you expand the way you think? Think about the different gifts that everybody can bring to your company because everybody comes from a different path. They have a different experience. And because they've had that different experience, they're looking at things through a different lens. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that lens is very helpful for for us as we design. I mean, it goes all the way through as we design product, as we market, as we sell, as we build Um, You know, we we have to be considerate of what that experience has been for our buyers. And if we are going to expect to build our business based off of referrals, which we all love, you know, that becomes even more integral. So I would say if that isn't part of your 2022 planning discussion, make it part of it. Ask the question, what can we do? Are we uh, do as we look around our table here, are we as diverse as we think we should be? And if not, what can we do? And how can we, if we can't find talent, then what can we do to train that talent? Where can we, where can we find people who maybe have the attitude that's right? Because attitude is something you can't train, but train them on the skills. Instead of going, hey, let me just try to keep pulling from my competitors because that is not gonna work. And it's, it's just not healthy. So for, for our industry. So I would encourage you to consider that in your planning, not only for 2022, but uh, beyond. Yeah. I love that really because when I help builders hire online sales counselors, I, some of the best online sales counselors I've helped them hire have been completely outside the industry Mm -hmm. and, and they bring a different energy and a different and, and there's certain skill sets you're looking for that you don't don't just, I mean, I'm not saying that people inside the industry don't work in that role. They certainly do. But sometimes you have to go outside the box to find that right person. So that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I just jump in too and, 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 and agree entirely that every builder I work with on a, on a, on a regular basis, uh, what we work on is, is building a bench. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's so much easier to get people that are in some kind of sales. Typically they have that in common that they've got sales DNA quote JP, I think the, the sales DNA, but right. they, they have that, they, you know, they, they could be early twenties right out of college. They could be in other industries, uh, but, but having had some sales ability and then transferring in as an associate in training, it's much easier to find that person and train them than to, fi- than to find that fully fledged salesperson that, that will follow the right process. So, I mean, obviously it's not, it's not a mutually exclusive thing. There are great sales people out there that we can, we can find, but it's hard to do that. There aren't that many mm-hmm. where it's much easier to find potential just you people have the right attitude and uh, passion for sales and train them. So I, I'm a big believer in, 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 in finding people and building a bench. I think you've got smart dwellings on the phone, uh, on, on the call. They, they said hello to you. Uh, Nathaniel was waving at us and he's done that with his sales team. They're, they're, I think one lady was selling um, ads, I think, for a media uh, and his new mm-hmm. manager was around. So, and they're, they're both doing great. They've both adapted and adopted really quickly and are off and running. So yeah, that's a great concept. 
there are other industries that are almost as crazy as we are insane as we are. Eric, I'm not <laughs> supposed to use that word. See now, you see how that just comes full I'm circle. offended by it. insane, so you can't use that one either. Uh, <laughs> we work a lot of hours and we do well, things very differently than other industries. And we can be very difficult for others to understand. So I get the comfort of wanting to hire from within because that can be hard for people coming from other industries to get. But, uh, and, and then Nathaniel I d- uh, did also uh, note in the chat if you can't find somebody local then look at remote work and can you utilize people i know he's got a couple of positions that he does that with and it's working out quite well for him so good good point nathaniel thank you very much for making that so uh we're going to keep in the interest of time i know we could uh, di- do deep dives on all of these but uh leah talk to us and i think you're the perfect person to do this talk to us about how we can bring more humanity into what we do every day. Wow. Yeah, I, I really, you know, it's been a really tough, pell-mell, crazy-paced year and two years now for, for the building industry. And at times we lost track of the actual customer and what their needs are because we've filled all those slots. You know, we've got lotteries going on. We've, we, we have sold more houses than we can even possibly build this year. And so we see that sometimes when more people are ta- trying to talk to us, we're like, uh, talk to the hand. I don't have anything to sell you, you know? And, and we really need to get back into that nurturing, that assistance, understanding, helping people understand what's going on. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, if you don't know what's going on in the building industry, you've been living under a rock, you know, this is what's happening. But we need to pretend that everyone we talk to, it's their first time hearing about this. So, you know, in that online sales realm or sales realm, or I've even heard stories of people walking into sales offices and the sales agent saying, I have nothing to sell, get out. So, you know, we've, we've got, no. we've got to be careful about Ouch. like that. Yes. And, and create more engagement with people and long-term nurturing and understanding that this market doesn't last forever like this. And if we make people angry now, that's going to reflect poorly on us in the future. And that's going to show up in our reviews, right, Carol, your digital reviews we sometimes fight with with our clients and things like that, because people aren't being cared for and cared about. And while there's wonderful digital nurturing we can do and great tools and great, you know, from our CRM all the way to our chat bots to ways that we can help engage the people who don't want to talk to us as salespeople, that's fine. But we need to ha- bring that compassion and that empathy back into what we're doing and really learn, relearn in some respects how to nurture leads because, and, and not just call them leads. We tend to do that on an industry side, but we need to talk to talk about them as people, right? I don't know if I'm, I'm jingling a lot or if you can hear the bells ringing on the- <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I can't we're in our head. head. But yeah. um, but you know, I, I just think that that was my biggest takeaway last year. I I said in Lasso, we need to meet people where they are and give them the experience they want. And I think this year is a continuation of that because especially with so many new salespeople and so many new online salespeople in the industry, not understanding what it was like when it took a lot more time, energy, and effort and relationship building to set an appointment. Um, And we have to go back to that relationship building and not just be trying, oh, sure, you want an appointment and not know a darn thing about them. So I would expand on that all the way through. I think you have to have a sales process. Melanie, said, you got to have a plan. Yes, you have to have a plan and your team needs to know what that plan is. And they need to know how to do those handoffs all the way through so that everybody is singing from the same proverbial sheet of music, you know, so we have to to provide that great experience. And that's one of the reasons why I always say online sales is the crossroads between marketing and sales, because a good online sales program has to have one foot in marketing and one foot in sales. And we have to have cohesive communication and messaging all across the board in the way that we communicate with people. So, you know, what, what online sales is saying is a continuation of marketing and by giving marketing the cues of what they're getting is so important. And then passing that along to sales so we can start where the OSC is left off and not 
start from scratch, right? So, so all of that, having that process is really important. Well, and we discovered how important having that process was or is when we did our survey this year. True. Um, so if you all haven't seen those survey results, then maybe I can get Kimberly to send those out to you too, because we are all still failing as an industry. And in fact, uh, worse this year than last year. And maybe that's because we have nothing to sell. Oh. Well, and that's part of where my, my says that from. <laughs> I feel like online sales counselors in general, their communication fell off this year because of that survey that Carol and Ben Marks and I do every year, it it fell off. And I think it's because they felt like, well, we got nothing to sell. Why should we communicate? But you still need to communicate. You Mm -hmm. still need to give people a wonderful customer experience, even if you can't sell them a house, because that's going to matter later. I always think I'm not going to be shocked every time you guys put that survey out. And then I read it and I'm like, really? (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Well, let's move on to Roland, who thinks Uh the future is so bright that we've got to wear shades in 2022. (laughs) So his advice for the new year includes Ted Lasso. So because he was tying it in with Lasso. So I I misheard. I I thought it was I thought that's what they wanted was Ted Lasso. Well, there you go. Tell us a little bit about that. I'm fascinated. (laughs) There we go. First, well, thank you so much. And thank you for this team, this esteemed panel putting it together. It's wonderful to be uh, with, with such wonderful um, experts in the industry. So thank you for that. I'm honored to be a part of it. Yeah. So w- when I got the uh, the invitation to write for Lasso, I immediately thought Ted Lasso was it's on our sort of consciousness right now. So a show of hands, who's actually watched Ted Lasso? Okay, good. And then maybe on the chat, you guys could sort of chime in. Let's see the, you know, the, the, to, to let us know that you've seen it. You don't actually have to have seen it to understand this next five minutes that I'm going to chat about. But uh, but I just thought it was a great example of, of uh, he is a character played by Jason Sudeikis, um, it's on Apple TV, and I know I, I fought that for. I didn't want to spend my five bucks a month for uh, for a while, but I finally gave in. But everyone kept raving about it, and now uh, you know I can't wait for the next. You know, there we go. It's lighting up. People are, are watching it. Um, but anyway, he he does represent so many great values and virtues. I did actually one of the things I wanted to say about him was kindness. So I'm really glad that Leah had mentioned that, and and I definitely love uh, that. Anybody that watches that show knows it. Really, the, the the sort of meta message is about being kind to each other. And, and we all need that and, and any industry does but especially home building as you said we've been through some crazy times so so that's one of the things that in there um so basically I, I, I try to make three points about what Ted Lasso uh talks about you know it's a crazy story he's an American football coach that gets picked up to uh, coach an English football team and he doesn't he knows nothing about it turns out he does really really well so the the three things he preaches one is you have to believe here it is uh, there's his sign so we have to believe in what we're doing we have to believe in our builder so a show of hands who feels as though you have the best builder out there the best companies to work with yeah so we have to be passionate oh, there we go i have never yet met a uh, a successful salesperson that didn't have passion it's just so important so um when, when, when you go out and demonstrate, you've got to say, I can't wait to share with you. I can't wait to show you what we're doing next and, and those kinds of things. So believing and, and, and being passionate go hand in hand. And then thinking, uh, he talks about thinking and being positive. So, you know, you have to think it first. You have to actually believe what, 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 what you're doing. So uh, the, the power of thought, you, you can't fake it. Uh, and then it's all about actions. It's the actions that, 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 that you take. And I, shockingly, I did, I did some research. I say shockingly because I think research shows that 98% of research is made up or something. But anyway, so I've, got, <laughs> I, I, I've got it here. Um, that, that, here we go. Tony Schwartz, a real person, I believe, president of the Energy Project. That sounds a little dubious, but I did find him online. States that optimistic salespeople outsell their pessimistic counterparts by 56%. So there we go. It, it, right? I believe it. Yeah, it makes total sense. And, and I've been reading a lot about kindness and happiness and people are studying this kind of stuff. Uh, and it, it, it really does count. So when you're, whether you're recruiting somebody, talking the OSC world or whatever, you, you want to present that optimistic picture, that, that, passionate, that passionate picture. Um, in the article, I also wrote about this with um, Keller Williams, who, who is really a great training company that happens to sell real estate. And that they have this great phrase that when, whenever they... They lose a sale. They, 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 when a salesperson loses it, they talk about a, um, a one-second funeral. 
In other words, that, that, that you, you gotta you gotta mourn it for a second and get over it. So I think one of the things that, that I as a sales trainer, sales coach, one of the things that marks great salespeople is this sales resilience. You know, you 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 can't you can't control the externals. Life is life, you know, things are happening. Uh, Leo talked about it, you know, with the crazy couple of years, whether you know it was coming through COVID and then we had a sort of mini boom going on that, that was unexpected, and then prices got away from us with supply chain issues, and then we We've been dealing with price escalation, or I call them price caps, but still the same thing, uh, or just shutdowns for a temp. So all this stress that, that that's going on. So you've got to be resilient. You know, you you really have to get you. You've got to have some strength there, but you've got to think positively and understand that this too shall pass. It's just a temporary thing, and um, you know, some of us have been in this market for decades, quite literally. Even though we all look very young. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, there we go. We uh, when we were five. Refusing to age, but um, but but these are cycles that we go through. And if I had to pick a cycle to go through, this ain't the worst one ever. You know, it's been really bad, but there's been light at the end of the tunnel, right? Which is that the market is really, really robust. You know, interest rates are crazy low. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm getting a little off track here, but but if if we were talking about the uh, some of the recessions, the the one with the end of the eighties or the early eighties. Interest rates were 17%, 16, 17%. So when you talk about, uh, you know, a 3% interest rate and, and, and that kind of stuff, it's just a gift. It's really the banks are having a sell of money. So to get back to that, the, the, the think positive and be positive. And then the last part of the article that I wrote was uh, in Ted Lasso, spoiler alert, and I'm sorry for this, but, but he, he, he delivers this little, um, this little cookie every morning to his boss. He, he shows up in his little pink box and he delivers this little cookie that, 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 that he makes. Fun fact, apparently that cookie was disgusting and uh, they were faking that it was nice. They had to change the recipe, but I really liked Ted Lasso. But anyway, the thing that I find so charming, first of all, he made that. He, it turns out he cooked it every night, uh, but it's about, creating, it's about creating a memorable experience. So I think as it relates to us, there's so much mundane stuff going on. It's, there's so much, uh, they could be so easy to be boring and, 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 and keep things transactional. And I think this market especially is crying out for connection and kindness and being memorable and making an extra effort for your clients and showing them that you really care. And lastly, before I, I, I hand over the baton here, there's a, a builder I work with in, in, in um, Louisiana called Alvarez. And every one of their salespeople every week goes out to every single home under construction and they make a little movie on their phone and then they email that to their client they get back and they say yeah it's amazing uh, i've watched a bunch of them because we had a little competition to see who did the, who did the best uh and they're usually 30 seconds or something but they're creating a memorable experience they're dealing with the supply chain issues because buyers are getting really frantic and upset uh about waiting uh so it's a great way to, to, to be proactive but i just thought it was like ted lasso and his little cookie uh in a pink box there that they're doing something nice and special and reaching out all right. So, and we look for sense. good stuff like Alvarez. They're going out and they're looking for the good stuff. They can accentuate right. the positive, which yeah, will just yeah. make that experience so much better. Absolutely. I'd well, like the buyers say- are getting used to their Wednesday afternoon email. If they don't get it by Wednesday evening, they're like, what, what's going on? Why haven't I heard from you? As opposed to being mad about the fact that, you know, it's been a two month delay, they're, they're more bothered about you know, that consistency of communication, which is yeah. wonderful. I- And you mentioned the word fun. I like to quote um, my favorite author, Dr. Seuss. It's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. Yeah. Oh, there so we go. <laughs> I, I think that's true. I mean, you know, life's too short to be bored with your job or hate what you're doing or yeah. not have fun with it. So, exactly. yeah, you, you got to find the fun in there. Otherwise, we would all go crazy. By the way, I, I'm, I, I think it's inappropriate to have a dragon because I'm allergic to Game of Thrones. So no, 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 no. I love my I, little dragon. This so, <laughs> dragon's awesome. So this dragon, dragon is one of our giveaways. Is there anything bad about stuff. dragons that, that we can I hope say not. I hope there's word? nothing bad about llama socks either. Should, I don't think so. Should we use dragon? Should we say large reptile? Are we allowed <laughs> to say dragon? reptile with evil eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> When they're oh, mythical creatures, I think they're still, I think they're still on board. So and whoever gets this one's going to get a I bonus. So. It's like that sticky rubber. And I keep picking dog hair off of it because there are two <laughs> large dogs that visit me in the office. Often. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and somebody is raising their hand or saying, Ooh. hi, I'm not sure which. So, um, so let's, uh, let's move on to Heidi as we, as we go and Heidi, you are preaching to the choir here, but I love it. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be singing your praises for this one. The customer is your customer for life. 
So Amen. talk to us about how we make them that way and how, how we keep them engaged with us. Absolutely. And, and it really goes along with what Leah and Roland just said, you know, something that Leah said made me, made, made me light up with just a little bit because it's something that I always say is that a lead isn't a lead. A lead is a person. A, a lead is an actual person. And, Absolutely. you know, we're, we're kind of moving into this era of heart. Um, you know, we've had a, a couple of years where we've learned to grow with our families and create better relationships. And our customers are expecting those relationships too. Just like what Roland said, you know, they're expecting a higher level of more personalized service. So once they sign on that dotted line, you know, I know a lot of builders, I see, I work with a lot of builders in Lasso and I see what they're doing in Lasso. And I know there are a lot of builders that, that are just pushing for that sale, but then after the sale, what happens? Are they still engaged with the buyer after the sale? Is there somebody on the other end that's helping them from that sale to close? And then from that close to infinity, right? So from that close until um, asking for referrals, cr still creating those relationships. You know, um, I was going to, to see if I could find from our friends at Zonda what the average amount of time a person stays in a home. I've heard it's seven years. I've heard it's five years. I don't know exactly what's true, but I know that people don't stay in their homes forever like, like they used to, um, especially the, the types of homes that most of the builders that we work with are, are building, right? Um, uh, I, I personally, I built a, a custom home three years ago and already, you know, we, we, we built it from scratch, but already we're thinking about our next home and, and what we're going to do next. So I know that I'm not alone in, in that type of situation, but following up with our, with our prospects after the sale, after close, making sure that we still love them and they still love us so they can show that to others. Um, I don't know about you guys, but anything I buy, I ask my, my bubble, my community for advice on. If I'm buying furniture from Wayfair, if I'm buying um, a car, I'm asking for, for advice from people that I know that have had good experiences. I think a home amplifies that because of the, the uh, investment involved that the first thing that I would do when buying a home is I'm going to ask my friends where they bought theirs and why they bought theirs. And if they had a good experience for builders, for custom builders or for um, on your lot builders, I think that's especially important because of the, the process involved with that. But they're uh, using those referrals are, are very important. So first we have to ask for them. So if we're not following up with our customers, we don't have the opportunity to ask for a referral, right? We don't have the opportunity to ask for a Google review, um, anything like that. So um, moving those forward, uh, I, I've seen a lot of builders using the CRM to move those forward past sale. And that I think that, that in 2022, we're going to see a lot more of that. And I love that. I, I would love to see um, in Lasso and in the CRM that was moving past just the sale and um, builders identifying the person that's going to handle that. You know, obviously your OSC might not be the right person to, to handle that post-close process. So whether it's your salesperson or if it's, um, I've seen a dedicated post-sale concierge, you know, someone that's dedicated for that to connect with the customers, um, connect with the, the buyers, your homeowners, um, make sure that warranty issues are taken care of in a timely manner or taken care of at all, right? right. <laughs> making sure that those warranty issues are taken care of. So that's what I see for 2022. Let's move past, past the sale and um, love those customers. I like that. The CRM, of course, is your customer resource manager, right? So use it to manage customers all yes. the way. And they're still your customers. They are your buyers for life. I love that. 
I, I love the, oh, sorry, you're on done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going? I, was gonna just say, I, I just love that idea of someone who engages the customer at the end of the experience, the warranty side, the kind of not just reacting to their warranty issues, but being proactive before that ever happens. And, it, and like you said, it can't be an online sales counselor, but it has to be very much like that person and create and continue that relationship on and be able to ask for those referrals and those reviews and things like that. So I think that's fantastic, Heidi. And of course, I'm going to put a technology spin on this. So ah. now <laughs> with all of the new home tech that we're coming out with, such as sensors inside your home, they can tell you that your roof is about to start leaking, oh. that your refrigerator is about to break, that your water heater is about to go. You already earned the, uh, the relationship with the customer. So why not maximize that for a long term and you be the person who's going to service that customer from the beginning to the end and think about increasing that customer value throughout that process. And now a lot of builders are starting to even sell furniture with companies like Monsi, where you can create that shoppable experience with the model home so the customer can purchase all of the furniture. So it's beyond the warranty. It's beyond all those things. So we always think like, oh no, the warranty, the negative things, but <laughs> turn that into positive, it's more profits for you, the builder. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. I, yeah. I, I, I just want to concur that, that I, but I just, I was on a call just before this one with the sales team and we, we talked about earning referrals and that each client, think of it as a downline where you should get at least three referral names. You might not sell to each one of those, but get, get at least three names of friends or relatives. And out of those three, one of those should yield great results. Was all the common sense in the world, all the research does show that, that, that doing business with people you're already doing business with is much easier than having to reach out and, 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 and find new people. So if there's a plan for the salesperson to, to, you know, to reach out at the peak times and stay in touch with a client, we talk about celebrating the, the home's birthday every year, like an anniversary, home mm-hmm. anniversary or whatever, and sending out a card as, as a unique time. You know, hey, your house, your home just turned three or something. But, but just something as a, as a reminder to stay in touch and, uh, and then set a goal of what a measurable referral rate should be. You know, is it, are you at 30% referrals yet? And if not, you know, how do you grow your business that way? So everything you talked about, I completely, completely agree as usual. Yeah, and it's the cheapest Form yes. of marketing. Yes. Yeah, the exactly. return with the return yeah. on the investment, it's the cheapest right. marketing. Yeah. And highest do return on gift. investment. Right. Yeah. And I, I've never met anybody that gave you a referral because of the gate, the gift. If you gave them a gift, if you're allowed to, it's because they loved you enough and want their friends to have that same experience. You right. know, so so we sometimes really worry about, oh, should I do this? Should I send them on a cruise? Whatever, you know, make sure it's the same for both parties if you're allowed to legally give guests or referrals. But really, it's more about it's the right thing to do and they want their friends to you know, have the same good experience. So it's a powerful thing. Absolutely. All right. So, Kevin. Oh, I thought we got the big oh news. Oh, my gosh, We're Kevin. On the edge of our seats. Okay, no, not I yet, there. Kevin. We can't. All right. I can't afford virtual reality. It's just so, so expensive. What am I going to do? I'm a poor little dragon with no budget. What do you say to that? I hear budget a lot. You know, obviously being in sales my entire life in one industry or another, you hear objections. And budget is one of the weakest objections ever. Now, granted, there are some companies that are struggling. They're worried about paying their bills. I get that. But if you are a typical production builder and you have a series of model homes in a community, you can walk into the boss's office with a pair of big brassy pens, brass pens, and you can (laughs) say to the rear boss, what's the carry cost on just one model home? Hey, there's another uh, big deal pen. What's the carry cost on a home, you know, on, on a model home? I guarantee you they know to the penny what it costs them every month to have and sit on that model home. So if you have multiple model homes, statistics will prove that you can take half of the price of a a single model home and do virtual reality tours for every series or every home in that series that you're selling in the neighborhood, photo real 3D renderings from company. And I'm not talking about the cheap offshore junk comes out of India. I'm talking about quality stuff from like Focus 360 and Rendering House and of course Outhouse, Um, you know, quality products. And interactive floor plans for every single plan that you have and high quality photography for every model you have, or even interior renderings for each home you have. 
you can do every bit of that for less than the cost of half of a single model home carrying it for just one year. So when somebody tells me that the brass just turned on the budget, go in and ask and demand for that budget because you're going to make them money. You're going to sell their homes faster. When you have a virtual experience, when you're selling to somebody that's relocating out of California and we know they're doing it, then they want to see that home. They're not going to travel to Tupelo, Mississippi to walk through a house. They're not going to do it. But they might get online and see that, wow, Elvis is from Tupelo. Maybe this house might be nice. Let me do a virtual tour. Oh, wow, this company has virtual tours. It honestly is getting to the point where your consumers expect it. It's not just a question of, well, DR Horton does it or Lennar does it. I need to do it now. It has nothing to do with that. Don't quit worrying about what the big builders are doing. They have completely different budgets than you have. They can buy you and bury your project under the, under the earth in a matter of two seconds. So don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about what you're doing. Talk to your boss, walk in their office, get that budget, eliminate one model home. Now, this advice does not work for on your lot builders. This advice does not work for custom builders. Uh, this, this advice does not work for companies that can only afford or fiscally can only afford to put one model home in the community. There are more creative ways to find some hidden dollars. Number one, reach out to your, reach out to your vendor and ask them if they have any kind of volume. Now, granted, if you're a smaller builder, you might not be able to qualify for the volume, but then you can also twist it and ask for bundles. You know, I know that when people work with us and we draft their plans, we give them free interactive floor plans. Free, literally free. Right off the top of the budget, it's gone. Now, that's only benefits people that do that, but that, or that draft with us. But that doesn't mean that you can't go to, you know, an alpha vision and say, hey, you know, we're interested in renderings, but we really can't afford interactives. Do you have any kind of bundle program where you could do that? Um, you know, so all these companies have some sort of concession where they want to make your life easier. If you're just shopping price, stop doing that. Price, just like your home, not all dirt is created equal. Not every square footage is equal. Not all uh, products are equal. So definitely increase your budget by just getting creative with working with your vendors and two, getting rid of that third or even sometimes second model home. You don't need it. Statistics will prove that I'm right and that your boss who thinks that you need to have 20 models in a community is wrong. Great advice. I would take it even a step further and I would say you can sell houses without physical model home if you have the, the virtual. So I was just at the Housing Transformation Summit mm -hmm. and Shea Homes is selling $3.2 million homes, no model home, sold out mm -hmm. community. Well, so it's yeah. definitely doable. Look and at condos. They've been selling been homes for yeah. years with no model homes. So it's definitely possible. And I think it does work for on your lot and custom too, because they're not going to see the uh, in a model home for, a, mm -hmm. for an on your lot or custom anyway. They're not going to see any home. I think that, you know, I came from that on your lot world and, and I definitely think that the, the builder that I worked for didn't have a, a model home in every location and the ones that they did were really old, you know, right. so I, I think it works just fine for on your lot and customers. Yeah, and it's, well. I, I think agree. it's even more Something. important. I yeah, think I Kevin do too. I think it's even more budget. important. Yeah. yeah. Talking about where do you find the budget if you're not already building homes? Yeah. The on your land guys. Very important. And yeah. one last tidbit, Kimberly, when you're looking at an on your lot builder and Heidi, thank you for bringing that up. An on your lot builder might have 30, 50, hundred plans in the library. They're only selling 10 of them. So if your excuse is I can't do virtual tours and all these, do the virtual tour on your top 10 plans. You know what they are. You, you look at your many, yeah. you can see which ones are selling. Yeah. Get them done. There's no excuse. Your customers expect it. They yeah. want it. They want mm -hmm. it. I've, OSC <laughs> see it all the time where they're, people are looking and asking them and trying to find those virtual tours. And don't bury your virtual tours. Do not bury them under five clicks, you know, to get there. Sorry. Absolutely. And think about creating a copy, a virtual copy of your existing physical model, and maybe just going with one physical model. That way your customers view that VR online, they come into your model home and they say, oh my goodness, this matches my expectations. What I saw online is exactly what I see here. So then now you can do virtual versions of your other model homes because now they trust you that it's going to represent the actual physical home. So eliminate the physical and go with the virtual all the way. Carol, I think we have our, our first topic for next year's uh, sales and marketing power hour. Yeah. <laughs> Virtual so, models versus, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. Our models. Let's Good go. Topic. Talk so, about and, it. Calendar, and, and, <laughs> and in the interest of, of our time here today, I want to move on very quickly to Carol. And this is really appropriate because denim marketing is about style, right? So, Absolutely. So, and, 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 and not all denim is the same, it's right? We not all, all denim is the same. So <laughs> let's go. You know, not all dem- denim is the same, just like not all buyers are the same. And, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, some of us like straight leg jeans or skinny jeans or slim jeans or flared or baggy or whatever, you know, same is true for our buyers. They all have different personal styles and they all have different personal communication styles. So, you know, I think the one thing we just see over and over again you know, it hit home with our survey we did earlier this year is, you know, communicating with buyers the way they want to be communicated with, you know, first of all, you have to ask, it's not just generational, you know, you might have a, you know, 50, 60, 70 year old buyer who'd rather text. Of course, that same buyer might want a phone call instead. And I, and I guess the number one thing that came out of our survey that we were the most floored about is the number of potential buyers who supplied phone numbers that weren't called back. So, you know, just something to keep in mind, you know, maybe ask on your online forms, you know, how do they prefer to be communicated with so that you are speaking to them the way they want to be spoken to. And then, you know, taking that one step further, um, buyers want to find you online where they want to find you. And I know a lot of people cringe over that, but I get asked all the time by builders, do I have to be on social media? Yes, I still get asked this question. Do I need to be on Facebook? I hate Facebook. Can I get off of Facebook? No, sorry, you can't get off Facebook. It is a million pound gorilla. It's got more traffic and more people on it than all the other sites combined, but it's important to be where they are and to be where they are to answer their questions when they have them. Um, It's something that Leisha Parrish, um, who produces the national coined the Netflix effect. So because of the Netflix effect, I created a whole marketing presentation around this. I actually really love this. So if Lisa's listening, yes, thank you for your idea. I stole it. Um, the Netflix effect is just the idea that I can get it when I want it. You know, I can go log on to Netflix or Hulu or Vudu or Apple, and I can watch what I want to watch now 24 seven all the time. You know, same is true for Uber Eats and Amazon and all these things that have taken off. It's all about the, we want it now. They want the same thing when they're shopping homes. They want the information they want now, which plays into almost everything that everyone has said today. It plays into, I want to, I want to tour that home now. Well, they can't tour it if you don't have a video of it or a 3D rendering of it or a 3D tour of it or whatever, right? So providing them what they want, where they want it now, which means it needs to be on your social and it needs to be on your website and it needs to be wherever they are. Um, And that's really what I talked about on my last one, but I had to tie it into jeans. So y'all have to go read it and comment it and get back to me on it. But it was, it was fun to write. I've learned more about jeans since. uh... (laughs) (laughs) I have my, I have my skinny jeans on today. I kept my flared jeans, Carol. Are they ever going to come back? They are in style. Well, that's the other thing. I I haven't let them go yet. I got a couple of. Everything's in style right now as it relates to jeans. Actually, there's articles out there. If you Google what jeans are in style, the answer is there's more jeans in style and more choices now than there ever have been like ever. And it's because everybody wants what they want. It was, it was very interesting. There's several articles on it. So very good. whatever you want to wear is good, Roland. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> we don't, I don't want to remind everybody we have prizes coming. We do up, have prizes. So so don't leave now. Stick I with the prize us. Was just being here with us. That, that's that's yeah. not the prize. Well, the prize and, uh, it's in itself. We're, we're, we're going to give them, you know, surprises for being here. But um, last and certainly not least, I want to talk a little bit to Anya. So Anya, tell us the best way to serve your customers. And somewhere in this answer, you also have to give us your big news. Big reveal. Yes, big yes. Reveal. Well, I guess I'll start with the big news since I know everyone's been asking me and waiting for it. So I'm very, very excited to announce that I am uh, joining a new go. Uh, and John Lee, uh, you may know him uh, from Rendering House. So we've decided to join forces. And really what I'm going to be doing is Uh, Being the face to our consumers representing the home building industry, I'm going to try to be the Martha Stewart of new home sales. We're going to bring the gut milk campaign to our consumers so that they never have to question, why would I want to buy a new home? So I need all of your help. I need all the builders out there to send me all the wonderful work you're doing, all the cool projects, all the new innovations in the new home industry so that I can showcase it and we really, really uh, got to show them why new is the right way to go. So, cool. so with that, 
Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that with that, I'm going to jump into my topic. So I talked about how far the home building industry has come during COVID. Um, you know, I really was impressed that um, a lot of home builders have embraced the technology, um, you know, by choice and not by choice forced into it. Uh, but we um, have implemented a lot of technology that Kevin, Kevin has talked about and really, you um, uh, giving our customers what they want. But one of the things that we continue to do, as Kevin also mentioned, is we continue to measure ourselves against our own peers. We look at what's DR Horton's doing? What's NVR's doing? What's, what's this guy doing? Oh, they're not doing the buy now yet, so mm, I'm going to wait. And so as an industry, we have been conservative industry to implement new technology to begin with. So I just want you to be careful there because technology in the next five years is going to explode because we're growing at an exponential rate. So the next five years will be nothing like the last five years have been. So if you're going to wait on that edge to say, mm, I'm just going to see, I'm going to see until it's perfect, you're going to fall so far behind that it's going to be impossible for you to catch up. Um, so I want you to really reach outside of our own industry when it comes to examples of serving our customers through technology because remember at the end of the day it wasn't the taxi company that disrupted the taxi business it was the technology company uber same thing with the hotel industry it wasn't the hotel chain that disrupted that industry it was airbnb so it's likely going to be a force outside of our own that will come for new for new home sales and I want you to really look at examples of how can we serve customers? What are other industries doing right now, whether it's chatbots, whether it's um, AR, VR, how can I implement that into my own business to really give my customers what we want? And um, I know I, I wanna keep us on track, but things like showing our customers price before they buy a house, Transparency, yeah. Transparency, like think about how you you shop, right? And 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 I think we're still as an industry holding on to that um, manipulation techniques in a way that like we don't want to show them the price because we're going to scare them off, right? Like what other industry does that? So my urge to you there is to please be uh, be considerate of your customers, uh, give them the experience that you'd want to experience when you're going to buy something you want to know what the price is. So starting with that, and of course, there's a lot of different areas um, for, in, in, for incorporating technology to help our customers from visualization to really helping them making that decision and making it easier. So that's my Thank answer. you. So that's so well said. So thank you all very much. And, and uh, we're, we're going to, because we're getting close to the top of the hour here, Carol, let's Thank I'm you excited. all for joining us today. I will get the recording out to everyone and to our wonderful panelists. So thank you, you guys. Have all of their thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Th